We have seen some of the clinical manifestations of malignant hyperthermia. Early recognition of these clinical signs leads to prompt diagnosis and more rapid institution of appropriate therapy. Effective and efficient management of the acute crisis requires a coordinated effort on the part of all operating room personnel. With the aid of a simulated case, we would like to demonstrate what we consider a rational approach to the initial management of the acute crisis. The patient is an eight-year-old boy scheduled for elective inguinal herniorrhaphy. The patient's medical and family history are negative. The anesthesiologist has chosen to use halothane as the maintenance anesthetic. Intubation of the trachea was facilitated by use of succinylcholine. The patient breathes spontaneously. Shortly after the induction of anesthesia, the anesthesiologist observes the sign suggestive of MH. Blood pressure is way up, 150 over 90, and his pulse rate's up to 150. His temperature is 39.5. We better abort this anesthetic. The anesthesiologist immediately informs the operating room staff, and the scheduled procedure is terminated. He seems to be pretty rigid. I think we have an MH crisis here. Cyanosis and modeling of the skin is observed. The core temperature is noted to be increasing and carbon dioxide absorbent exhaustion appears accelerated. After diagnosis is made, effective management is facilitated by previous training that allows the operating room staff to provide immediate life-supporting care. Under, under the direction of the anesthesiologist, simultaneous events begin. Additional staff is summoned to expedite treatment. Part of the OR team devotes their energies toward immediate cooling of the patient. At our hospital, we employ immersion of the patient in ice water contained in a portable rubber raft. The raft or other container and large quantities of ice should be readily available. Other adjuvant cooling methods should also be available. These would include the infusion of ice saline intravenously, the use of hypothermia blankets, and irrigation of the stomach, bladder, and peritoneal cavity with cold solutions. If available, cardiopulmonary bypass is an effective and rapid method of decreasing body temperature. Cooling is continued until the patient's temperature returns to near normal, with care taken to avoid hypothermia. Intravenous bicarbonate is given empirically in a dose of 1 to 3 milliequivalents per kilogram to correct the metabolic acidemia which develops. At our institution, there is available on an emergent basis a malignant hyperthermia tray, which is kept in pharmacy and supply. This tray is a collection of medications deemed necessary to treat the multiple pathological events occurring in the acute crisis. Included are diuretics, the antiarrhythmic procaine amide, sodium bicarbonate, and intravenous dantrolene with sterile water for its reconstitution. Although the delay time for obtaining the malignant hyperthermia tray from pharmacy is slight, at our hospital, we keep a supply of intravenous dantrolene and sterile water in the operating room. One person in the operating room is assigned the duty of reconstituting and injecting the drug if it is indicated. Treatment is directed toward correction of physiologic abnormalities. The patient is hyperventilated to correct the respiratory acidemia. An indwelling arterial catheter greatly enhances cardiovascular monitoring and makes much easier the obtaining of serial laboratory parameters. Intravenous dantrolene is infused at a dose of one milligram per kilogram every 15 minutes until a reversal of the pathology is noted. Slowing of the heart rate, decreasing rigidity, an improvement in the acid-base status, and a decrease in the temperature are indicative of successful therapy. When the cooling appears to be successful, the patient is removed from the ice immersion and prepared for transport. The patient is stable and may be transported to the recovery room or intensive care unit for an extended period of intensive monitoring. The patient is at risk in the post-crisis period for recurrence of malignant hyperthermia and may require retreatment with dantrolene and continued systemic support. Also in the post-crisis period, he is at risk for hyperkalemia, secondary to massive skeletal muscle damage. He is also at risk for acute renal failure, secondary to myoglobinuria, and diuresis is recommended in the post-crisis period. We have presented in this film some of the basic principles in diagnosis and management of malignant hyperthermia. 
we hope that with adequate operating room personnel education and application of these principles, that the mortality and morbidity secondary to malignant hyperthermia may be significantly decreased.